Yesterday we defined a magnetic domain. Who can tell me what a magnetic domain is? Good, Mateo. So far, so good. A tiny region inside a ferromagnetic material. What's a ferromagnetic material? Somebody else. We'll come back to you, Mateo, for the rest of that definition. What's a ferromagnetic material? Yeah. Yeah, it's something that can become magnetized. What's an example of a ferromagnetic material? Yeah. Steel. Steel. Yeah, because it's an alloy of. It's an alloy of. What's present in steel? What's the most common ferromagnetic material? Iron, Fe. The chemical symbol for iron is Fe. Iron, steel, cobalt, nickel, I think is ferromagnetic. Hey, what's not ferromagnetic? Well, a piece of paper isn't ferromagnetic, but that's because it doesn't have domains. What is what is what else is not ferromagnetic? Copper. Copper is a conductor, just like um, just like steel is a conductor, but it's not ferromagnetic because copper doesn't have these domains, these little regions that have electron spins in a certain way. Now, how do we represent those electron spins? By arrows, yeah. So tiny little regions inside these ferromagnetic materials, inside these materials that can become magnetized, that are represented by arrows. Now, if we have a, just a plain ferromagnetic material that isn't magnetized, what do those arrows look like? Yeah, they're everywhere. They're, hey, Benton was, had his hands going every which direction. These arrows are pointing pretty much in random directions. How do we magnetize that? How do we be, make those domains start becoming aligned like this? In other words, how do we make these black domains start looking more like these blue domains right here? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's one way we do it. We bring another magnet nearby it. These domains, like for instance, if this blue one is close enough to this black one here, these blue domains start affecting these black domains here, causing them to start pointing in the same direction as the blue ones are. Now, it might not be quite as pronounced as I have it drawn here. They may be still kind of pointing somewhat different directions, but they'll be more aligned than they were before. That'll give it some magnetic effect at least. What's the polarity of both of these magnets? You see the domains are pointing from left to right. What does the polarity look like? Which end is south? Which end is north? South is the left side. How do you know that? In both cases, how do you know that? Yeah, the magnetic field or the magnetic domains, I should say, point towards the north. Got it? What's the other way we could do that, by the way? What's the other way we could cause these randomized domains to start pointing in a similar or the same direction. Then? Yeah, if you wrap a wire around it and apply an electric current through that wire, we're going to learn more about this today, by the way. Electric current generates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field that's produced by the wire, even if that wire is not ferromagnetic, copper wire still produces a magnetic field that causes the domains in this ferromagnetic material to start becoming aligned. That ferromagnetic material starts looking more like this with a north pole and a south pole. Let's go back to you now. Jacob, what's a magnetic field? A region in which the magnetic force is experienced by the magnet forms ferromagnetic field. Good. A region in which a magnetic force could be experienced by a magnet or a ferromagnetic material. Just like an electric field is a region in which an electric force could be experienced by a charge. Just like a gravitational field is a region in which a gravitational force could be experienced by a mass. It's a region in which a magnetic force could be experienced by a magnet or by a ferromagnetic material. By the way, uh, the symbol for magnetic field is B. Remember the units for it? B, magnetic field strength, is equal to blank, what units? Tesla, yeah, capital T, Tesla. Does anybody remember the ballpark magnetic field strength of the Earth? I told you, you didn't have to memorize this number, but if you can give me a ballpark number, that'd be great. Uh, a little bit stronger than that. Yeah. The number that I had up on the board was 5 times 10 to the minus 5. I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't try to remember the base. You don't even need to remember the exponent, the power of 10 that it is. But sometimes it's helpful for comparing an answer against, so that you can determine whether your answer is reasonable. Okay, this would be 
probably about the lowest magnetic field you get. You might see 10 to the minus 6 somewhere, conceivably even 10 to the minus 7. Probably not much lower than this. The highest you'll probably get would be when MRI was 15. So about 10 to the 1 Tesla. Probably not much higher than that, right? You should be, in all likelihood, when you calculate magnetic field strength, somewhere in that range of 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the positive 1. Let's look at some diagrams here. I'm going to draw these diagrams a little bit differently than I drew them yesterday. Here's a magnet. The domains are aligned. I'm not showing you which direction they're aligned in. It has a polarity, north pole and a south pole. I'm not showing you which end is north and which is south. I'm just going to draw a few field lines here and label one of them. One field line pointing to the left. Can you tell me what the polarity of this magnet is now? Benton? Yes, the self is on the left. How'd you know that? This is true. Yes, you are. Good. So that must be a north end, and this must be a south end. Outside of a magnet, magnetic field points from north to south. Inside of the magnet, the domains, and by extension, the magnetic field points from south to north. What's the other way we define direction of the magnetic field? Outside from north to south, inside from south to north? The second way we defined it was, yeah, yeah, the way that a compass needle would point when placed in the field. So if you were to put a compass right here, that compass needle would point this way in the direction of the magnetic field away from the north and toward the south. Let's do another one here. Here's two magnets. What do you know about these two magnets? They have, they have what, sir, the same magnetic poles on the inside? Yes. Yeah. How do you know that, Jacob? How do you know that these two poles right here, one and two, are like poles or the same poles? Good. And how do you know that they're repelling each other? Good. Yeah, the shape of the magnetic field. The field lines don't join up, which indicates a force of repulsion. And if it's repulsion, they both have to be either north or they both have to be south. Do we know which it is, north or south? No, we don't. I see a couple of heads doing this. No, we don't know which way it is, north or south. What if I drew one magnetic field line there? Can you tell me which it is now? Then It is south. You know that this is south because the magnetic field goes away from the north toward the south. By default, this one must be south as well because south repels south, and then this one must be north. Um, could it ever be the case that this is south and this is south? Could you ever have two south poles in the same magnet? No. If you have domains pointing this way, or sorry, magnetic fields pointing this way, then the domains have to point this way. And we define the direction of a domain as being from south to north. Therefore, this has to be north. That's the way it's defined as being north. There is no such thing as a magnetic monopole. You cannot have just north or just south. Unlike charges, where you can have just positive or just negative, you can't have just a north or just a south. Let me draw one more diagram here. Uh, what do we know about these two magnets? We don't know a lot about them, but we do know something about them. Yep. Uh, what do you mean by that? Okay, yeah, it could be. We're not sure which way they're facing, but you're right, they are facing the same way. We know that, uh, let's call this number one, number two. Number one has to be opposite pole to number two, an unlike pole to number two. And how do you know that? Good. The field lines join up, and when the field lines join up, we have to get a force of attraction. So which is north, which is south? We're not sure, but if we draw this arrow, then that means that this one, position number one, must be what? Arrow pointing to the... This is not inside a magnet. It's in between magnets, 
but it's still outside of a magnet, which means it points away from the north and toward the south. What's this one going to be? Can it be another south? Can't possibly have two souths in the same magnet, right? Can this one be north? No, you can't have two norths in the same magnet any more than you can have two souths. If we were to draw some more field lines, they would start looking like this. Again, away from the north and toward the south. Is that good? Yesterday we drew the magnets and we said, what do the field lines look like? Today we're drawing the field lines and we're saying, what do the magnets look like? Now it doesn't matter what I give you or what we give you on a diploma exam or on a unit test, even if it's a completely different setup of the magnets, one that you've never seen before. If you use what we've done today, and that is field lines join up when they attract, don't join up when they repel, field lines go away from from north toward the south, you should be able to nail any question you get. Again, even if it's a diagram that is completely unfamiliar to you, if you remember those two things, you should be able to nail any of them. All right? This is where we left off yesterday. Santa Claus is up there in northern Canada, somewhere in northern Canada. You guys know the postal code, by the way, for... Get your number right in your letters to Santa. Santa Claus, North, Col North Pole, Canada. Postal code is H-O-H-O-H-O. -O -O. You guys didn't know that? Ho, ho, ho. It's quite a coincidence that it ended up being that postal code. Um, Santa Claus lives in northern Canada, but we don't call northern Canada magnetic north. We call it magnetic South. And that comes from the definition of the direction of magnetic field that you guys told me earlier. It is away from the north toward the south, and it is the way that a compass needle points. If I put a compass right here at the equator, it will point this way. It must point in the direction of the field, and the field must point from north to south. So this has to be south magnetically, and this has to be north magnetically. Geographically, it's opposite. Another thousand years? Maybe Canada will be a magnetic north again if we get a reversal of the poles. But for now, at least, and I'm pretty sure until after your diploma exam, that would really mess things up if a reversal happened before then. Okay, but I'm pretty sure we're safe until the end of January that northern Canada is magnetic south and southern, southern Antarctica, Australia, and so on is uh, magnetic north. Today we're going to focus on that other way of producing a magnetic field, and that is by electricity. Let's pretend for a second that you're, you got a map in front of you on your desk, you got a lamp beside your desk, trying to look at this treasure map because you know, for years now you've been looking for this buried treasure, and you're pretty confident you're getting close. You found this map, you see an X marks the spot, you're sitting at your desk, it's starting to get dark, you got the lamp there just in case, you got a compass. You're trying to figure out which way you got to navigate in the morning in order to find this treasure, where to dig for the treasure. The compass is pointing this way. Okay, everything is going the way that you feel that it should. You're making progress, determining where you're going to go in the morning to dig up this treasure. And all of a sudden, you flip on the light because it's getting a little dark. And all of a sudden, the compass needle starts pointing in another direction. It starts going down this way. And now you're all messed up. You're like, what the heck is going on here? This is like touching a fridge and a stove at the same time. Weird things happen. You flip the light off, and it goes back to the way that it was. But now you can't see. So you flip the light on, and it goes back to this way again. And then you flip the light off, and so on, and so on, and so on. You're trying to figure out what it is that's causing this compass needle to be deflected. Whenever the light is on, the compass needle points towards magnetic south, the Earth's magnetic self. Whenever it's off, sorry, whenever the light is on, Whenever the light is off, it points the way it's supposed to. Whenever the light is on, it points in some other direction. What's the explanation? What's the conclusion that we can draw from that? There's two of them, by the way. What's one of them? Good. One is the electric current going through the wire that powers the lamp is causing a magnetic field that is affecting the compass. Okay, that's one explanation. The other explanation is... Okay, that's kind of, they kind of go together. The Earth's magnetic field is not as strong as the magnetic field caused in the lamp by the wire. The other is that the light causes the magnetic field. 
Well, we can test that pretty easily. Let's flip on a flashlight. Flip off the light, flip on a flashlight. Shine a light right on it. Guess what? Compass doesn't deflect. So your first conclusion must be correct, and that is that the electric current generates the magnetic field. That was a discovery that was made 199 years ago. It's 200 years next year. And it is a discovery that, in my opinion, is one of the biggest, most important technological discoveries. I don't mean scientific discoveries. You know the difference, right? Science is knowledge. Technology is application. This is one of the biggest technological discoveries in the history of the world. There are others, like the invention of the wheel, that are kind of important. But there aren't too many that we use in our day-to-day -day lives now that are used more than this one. Everything we do in our day-to-day -day lives now depends somewhat on this discovery. Your phones, your calculators, your car depends upon this in so many, so many ways, even though it's a gasoline-powered engine, or at least most of you would have a gasoline-powered engine. Your television set, whether it's one of the old-style TVs or flat-screen TV. Your computers, your doorbell. Like when you ring ding dong at the front door of your house, that's based largely on this technology. Just about everything we do in a day technologically is based on, at least in part, this discovery. This is what we're going to focus on today, this discovery and the details of this discovery. We know that a magnetic field generated by a magnet has a shape that is much like the magnetic field surrounding charges. But what does the magnetic field look like? It's caused by a moving charge or a wire. Well, it's circular. I'm going to draw a couple of those right now. Let's say that we have an electron that's moving. Which way is that if it's represented by a dot? Into the page or out of the page? Remember the dart story? If you see a dot, it means the dart is coming towards you. So from where you guys are, this dot means it's coming out of the page. The magnetic field surrounding it is circular. In fact, there's a series of circles, each indicating a field line. They get further and further apart as you get further and further away from the moving charge, which makes sense, right? If the moving charge is causing the field, the further you get away from the charge, the weaker the field is going to be, the further apart the field lines are going to be. We have another moving charge pointing, which way is this? Into the page or away from you guys, yeah. Circles again, concentric circles, one around another, getting further away from each other, weaker field as you get further away from the moving charge. That's what the field looks like. That's what the shape of the field is. But what about the direction? For this, we're going to use our hands to kind of manipulate our fingers and our thumb, use it as a little bit of a tool to determine what the direction of the field looks like. The rule is called the wire grasp rule. The wire grasp rule involves two variables, your thumb and your fingers, bent, but we'll discuss that in a minute. Your thumb and your fingers, when you do this wire grasp rule, have to be at 90 degrees to each other, like this. Not like this. Your thumb that is at 90 degrees to your fingers is going to point in the direction of the moving charge. Now, if it's, it's going to point in the direction of the moving charge. If it's a positive particle, it's going to be my right hand that I stick my right thumb in the direction of the moving charge. If it's a negative particle, it's my left thumb. So left thumb is negative particle, right thumb is positive particle. But regardless, thumb has to be 90 degrees to your fingers, and the thumb's going to point in the direction of the moving charge. 
my fingers that when I started this were kind of straight like this, right? I'm now going to bend a little bit. Still keeping them at 90 degrees to my thumb, but bent a bit. My bent fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field, remember the symbol B, magnetic field, produced by the moving charge. Let's take a look at the two examples that I have near the top of the page in order to put this into play here. This blue one, this blue charged particle, negatively charged particle, I think we said it was. Let's make it both negative, actually. This blue negatively charged particle moving which way? Represented by a dot, it's moving towards you, out of the page. Left hand or right hand? Negative particle, left hand or right hand? Left hand, yeah. Okay, take your left thumb, put it at 90 degrees to your fingers. I want you to put your left thumb now pointing out of the page. Now, for me, because my page is vertical, my left thumb will point this way. If you want to do it according to your page, then your left thumb will point this way, toward the ceiling. It doesn't matter. Your frame of reference is the page. Whether it's my page or your page, it doesn't make any difference. You're still going to get the same answer here. If it's easier to do it looking up front, great. If it's easier to do it looking at your own page on your desk, great. Do it that way. Thumb, either any way you look at it, is out of the page, your page or my page. Now I'm going to bend my fingers. How much do we bend them? Halfway? Sounds good. Like this? Okay. Right now, my half-bent fingers are pointing to the right. Look at you. Look at your fingertips. Okay, not the bent part of your finger, not the ring on your finger, not your knuckles. Okay, you're looking at your fingertips. My fingertips right now are above the wire. Okay, the moving charge, the wire, is, is right here. My fingertips are above it, and they're pointing to the right. But what happens if I bent them even more? Well, now they're to the right of the wire, and they're pointing down. What if I rotated it more? Well, now my fingers are to the left of the wire, and they're pointing up. Well, which is correct? They're all correct because it's a circular magnetic field that, in this case, is, pound, is, uh, is pointing clockwise. So it doesn't matter as long as you bend your fingers and as long as you have them 90 degrees to your thumb. It doesn't matter how much you bend them. It doesn't matter if you twist your wrist around. My fingers are going to point clockwise any way you look at it. The direction of the magnetic field here is clockwise. The second one. We've got a negative particle, left hand or right hand? Left hand again. Negative particle going into the page, represented by the X. Okay, thumb, fingers 90 degrees to each other. Don't have to bend them yet. Thumb, fingers 90 like this. Thumb in the direction of the particle, which is into the page. For me, it's like this. For you, it would be like this if you're using your page as a frame of reference. Doesn't matter. Thumb into the page, bend your fingers a bit. How much? Doesn't matter. Bend them a little bit, bend them a lot. Any way you look at it, the magnetic field will point which way? Counterclockwise. How many people did it using my page as the frame of reference? Okay, how many people did it using their own page as the frame of reference? You guys get the same thing? Of course you did. It's counterclockwise on the page that you're working on. CW stands for clockwise. CCW stands for counterclockwise. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more examples. This one is going to be a positive particle. This one is going to be a positive particle. This one is going to be a negative. Positive particle going which way? Represented by an X, it's going to be which way? Into the page. I'm going to draw one field line surrounding it. There are lots but one's enough to provide a direction for me, right? What about this one? Also circles. Into the page, okay, diagram number one here, into the page, left hand or right hand? Right hand, because it's a positive particle. Not a bad idea when you see what kind of particle it is to remind yourself which hand you're going to use there. Right hand. 
thumb in the direction of the particle, which is into the page. Remember, at 90 degrees to the fingers. Thumb. Now bend your fingers a bit. Which way are they pointing? Clockwise. The second one where we have the dot, which means coming towards you, out of the page. Positive particle, it's right hand again. Thumb in the direction of the particle, 90 degrees to the fingers, right? Thumb out of the page. Fingers bend a little bit. What? Whole lot? Doesn't really matter, right? Which way are my fingers pointing? Any way you look at it there, Mateo? Yeah. Kind of like to the left and underneath here to the right, right? But I get what you're saying there. Ends up being counterclockwise. Kind of making sense of it? These are negative particles going in the direction of the arrow there. This one's tougher. This meter stick is going to be my moving charges to the left. You see the arrow on the meter stick? If I stick my left thumb 90 degrees to my fingers, left thumb in the direction of the moving charge, bend my fingers around, you can see that the magnetic field would go around like this. Yes? But you can't describe that as clockwise or counterclockwise, right, with your with you being in front of the whole thing. So how are we going to describe this? Well, tell me which way the magnetic field is pointing above the wire. This is above the wire, right? This is below. This is behind the wire. This is in front of the wire. So above, in front, below, behind the wire. Which way is the field pointing? Which way is the field pointing above the wire? This is the page. Which way is the field pointing above the wire? This is my page. Out of the page. Yeah, look. Look. Thumb. This is my page. Thumb pointing in the direction of the current. Fingers, right now, fingertips are above the wire. And they're pointing out of the page. Right now, they're in front of the wire pointing toward the bottom of the page, below the wire pointing into the page, and behind the wire now pointing toward the top of the page. Now, if you're doing it according to your page, which is on your horizontal surface on your desk, let's say this desk is my page here. Okay, my current is still pointing to the left. Right now, where are my fingers? Don't tell me which way they're pointing. Where are they? Uh, be careful. No, yeah, they're in front of it, right? Because, Parker, this is my page, right? This is my page. This would be above. This would be below. This would be in front. And this would be behind. So when they're in front of the wire, which way are they pointing? Down the page. When they're below the wire, which way are they pointing? Into the page. Behind the wire, they're pointing toward the top of the page. And above the wire, they're pointing out of the page. How do we express this? So there's a number of ways that we could do it. If you feel confident about your ability to draw it, then draw it. Okay, we got something that looks like this. Do you see what I've done there? It's not the greatest, but I think we can see it there. Out of the page at the top, down the page at the front, into the page at the bottom, toward the top of the page in the back. The other way you could do it is to say, out of the page, above, into the page, down the page in front, and up the page in behind. Do you see my little symbol there for behind, the broken arrow? Maybe you just want to use words. 
Maybe you just want to say in words, above the wire, it's pointing out of the page. In front of the wire, it's pointing down the page. I don't care how you describe it. Okay, as long as you know that the magnetic field is going this way. Okay. Kind of makes sense? You're going to work on a worksheet here in just a moment here. There's two little things that I want to tell you about the worksheet. Firstly, if you have no trouble whatsoever with this worksheet, you are not normal. It is completely normal to have some trouble with working through these at first. You will get better at it. All of you will get better at it. But none of you, most likely at least, none of you will start off perfect at this, being able to nail this with no issues whatsoever. If you do, you're not normal. If you have a little bit of trouble, it is perfectly normal. Don't panic. It's perfectly normal. Second thing that I want to point out is just a notation. In question number one, they talk about electron current. That's the flow of electrons. We would use our left hand for that because it's negative particles. You can see, I don't think you see it on this worksheet, but you can see it down the road, something called conventional current. Conventional current is the flow of positive charge. And if we're using the flow of positive charge, conventional current, which hand would we use? The right hand. I've made a note at the back there under our little dictionary thesaurus. Conventional current equals positive charge. So just remember, in the context of magnetism, use your right hand when you see that word conventional current. Just the same as if you see the word proton or alpha particle, use your right hand. OK, let's see what we can do with these questions. Let's have a look at number one. Uh, this is electron current number one. It's left-hand rule because it's an electron current, negative charge. The direction of the magnetic field is circular. There's an infinite number of circles here, right? But we're going to draw one because they're all in the same direction. X represents which way? Into the page or out of the page? Into the page. So we're going to take our left hand, 90 degrees to our fingers, stick your left thumb into the page, then bend them a bit. Or a lot, doesn't matter. Which way are they pointing, no matter how much you bend them? Yeah, it's going to be counterclockwise. How about the next one? Out of the page, also circular. Thumb in the direction of the, the moving charge, out of the page. Fingers are going to point, when I bend them, going to point, doesn't matter how much I bend them, they're going to point clockwise. I wouldn't suggest that these two are easy, but they're easier than the next one. The third one's the hardest one so far. Once again, electron current, left hand, moving to the right. Thumb points to the right, above the wire. My fingers are above the wire right now, right? Which way are they pointing? Into the page. Now they're behind the wire. Which way are they pointing? Let's say the pen is my wire here. My fingers are behind the wire. Which way are they pointing? Down. Now my fingers are below the wire. Oops. Below the wire. Which way are they pointing? Taylor, now my fingers are in front of the wire. Which way are they pointing? Yeah, in front of the wire they're pointing up, up towards the top of the page. You can draw like this. You can do it in words. I know a couple of people did that. Um, you can try drawing it something like this. Right, whatever works for you, as long as you recognize which way the field is pointing there. OK, let's try the other ones now, four, five, and six. See if you can do those. OK, number four, alpha particle, right hand. Right hand rule. Thumb in the direction of the moving charge, right hand. 
Okay, right thumb 90 degrees to my fingers, right thumb pointing toward the top of the page. Okay, I'm going to use my ruler here, my meter stick as a little manipulative here. Okay, this is my alpha particle moving up, thumb pointing up, fingers right now are in front of the alpha particle and they're pointing to the, to the right. Right now my fingers are to the right of the alpha particle and they're pointing which way? This is the page, remember. They're pointing into the page. Yeah, away from you or into the page. I'd rather say into the page, actually, because that's what we're using as our frame of reference. It's the page, not you. Behind the wire, right now my fingers are behind the wire and they're pointing this way, to the left, right? And right now, my fingers are to the left of the wire, and they're pointing which way? Out of the page. Now, you could also draw it like this, right? You could say the magnetic field is like this. It does the same thing. Some of, you, some of you use words to describe it. That's okay as long as you essentially said what I said one way or another. Let's take a look at number five. The diagram below shows the magnetic field surrounding a moving electron. Negative particle, left-hand rule. Indicate the direction of motion of the electron. It's kind of like, like basic algebra in grade 10 or grade 11, except it's with a hand rule instead of with, with variables. We have a thumb. We have bent fingers. Usually we say, thumb points this way, which way do my fingers point? This time we're going to say, fingers point this way, clockwise, which way does my thumb automatically point? Out of the page. The only way my thumb can point is my fingers are going to go clockwise there. And what about the next one? I'll ask you number six. This is a moving alpha particle, so it's the right-hand rule. Thumb, fingers. This time instead of fingers, see which way my thumb points, we're going to say, uh, sorry, instead of thumb, see which way my fingers point, we're going to say, my fingers point clockwise, my thumb must automatically point into the page. We're going to represent that by an X.